Макс. Okay, guys, I'm ready to party. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks. So, um, just ask you regarding the slides. Here's a scroll bit. Add a scroll bit. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, so, uh, hi, people. Nice to meet you here. I really love, I really have a very positive impression of this place. Like, it's a very creative way to use something, um, how to say, something old, something um, that used to be maybe meaningful before by, you know, recreating, like reconstructing the meaningfulness ar around it. So, um, just a short presentation. So, my name is uh, Vlad and um, I'm a social entrepreneur, also a policy entrepreneur and a crypto nurse. I'm working with cryptocurrencies from uh, Stockholm. And uh, I'm partly here today because I no uh, Adonis over there, as you can see, intellectual type of person. <laughs> and uh, so I'm very happy to be here with all of you. It feels, feels as a personal privilege. So, um, and also I just want to say I have my girlfriend here, Iti, who's also going to speak after me, basically. So, um, uh, the thing is like this, I'm going to speak about um, decentralized citizenships and network states and why this can be a very good thing for, uh, let's say, 21st century and how it can improve uh, things like democracy and governance and community activism and so on. Now, before I start my presentation, I would like all of you, you can discuss two and two together or in larger groups as you're sitting here on the sofa. How do you understand the term, terms like citizen and citizenship? What kind of words, association, associations are you getting in your head when you when you hear or read the word, let's say citizen or citizen, just, just take like one minute for that. All right, I will I will count the time. Passport. Identity. Refugees. I mean, you can have a more discussion now with yourself, and then we can take it together. Like, okay, after one minute. I would say Okay, people, time is flying, flying fast when you have fun. Yeah, I, I have a short... Just a couple of words, like randomly. How do you understand the word, words like citizenship or citizens? I, he, he has a great idea. I, I consider a modern citizenship as a subscription for a service. Uh, so when you don't like any service and there is lots of other choices, yeah. uh, you can uh, change the service. So you pay taxes or you do whatever like is mm -hmm. meaningful for the society uh, in another place if you don't like the service you was in. So okay. pragmatically positioned that is a subscription. All right. Thank you for that very elaborated answer. Okay. Any more thoughts? Okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's the best description I've heard in my life, mm -hmm. I have to say that. Uh, for me, I, I also want to expand that it's always a gray area, you know, because you can be a citizen of one country, resident of one, and you can change your subscription, so thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I have to say the idea is identity, so the it's the thing uh, uh, that uh, citizenship, uh, that the thing that helps me to identify uh, me like uh, belonging to one or other um, state. All right, thank you for that as well. Any more thoughts? Any more associations? Ideas? I think the, the limitation is big 
Um, nowadays, I think there's a lot of that potential to go more. Yeah, there, there's potential to, to go other ways, mm -hmm. but um, I think the minds are very limited, and uh, and also the structures right now are very limited. And, but also sometimes um, those limits they they lead to uh, big creati creativity. Uh, exactly, and uh, this is partly why we are having this presentation to kind of unlimit ourselves and be more creative in our mindset. Uh, I would say partly because um, to history, the world, the world citizen, you know, citizenship has changed a lot. And um, that's what I want, I want to start my presentation with by, before going into the scroll. Ah, uh, uh, scroll. Ah, sorry, no, sorry. So, in order to, to explain to you what is the word, um, the meaning of decentralized citizenship, so I have to first explain what we mean with decentralization and what we mean with citizenship. So for the start, that something is decentralized, you know, decentralization in this sense, we speak about more modern technology, but it's meant that uh, individuals, organizations can do something together, can exchange things, cooperate, without some kind of a public authority, like a government institution, or with some kind of a, let's say, private middleman, like a bank. So that's, for example, the whole point with, let's say, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. There is no government, you know, behind Bitcoin. It's directly created from the bottom up, and people can transfer the currency there is no bank, you know, you don't need a bank account to transfer uh, Bitcoin between two, uh, two parts, so to say. So that's the meaning of, you know, decentralized. Um, and now when we speak about citizenship, in a more, let's say, modern sense, what's usually mentioned like in research is that the term citizenship is today uh, more about how to say we, we like most of us around the world we associate citizenship with, with nations like with uh, states and so on and uh, historically uh, how to say the word citizen comes from the word city you know that's the historical connection so if you look on history uh, the first citizens in, uh, in, in the, the history of humanity, I mean, the history of our planet, we're living in what today is, for example, Iraq, uh, Syria, Greece, Italy, Albania, Spain, and so on. Because this is like the first cities were developed, like in, for example, in the area of Mesopotamia, where you have, let's say, Iraq and Iran today. Then you had this idea of citizenship, like in the city states like Athens, and later in the Roman Republic. So this is kind of a heritage that is still alive with us today. It's, it's based on kind of similar ideas, similar principles. Um, and just to go back to research, what is mentioned is that every modern citizenship in a sense of, let's say, nationalities in the sense that you are considered to be a member of a political nation, it has like three, three dimensions. So you have the the legal dimension, which means that you have certain freedoms and rights, like you know, you have freedom to organize an NGO, or you have rights to healthcare, you know, so you go, when you go to the hospital, uh, courts, you know, the rule of law, and those types of functions. Mm -hmm. Then you have the the, the particip uh, part participation, the participative part, which is, for example, that uh, you exercise your rights. To when you vote during elections, or maybe you are doing some community service, or maybe even you are, let's say, working for the military or the police. And then there is the, the third dimension, which is more about uh, affections, more about identification. So, for example, that, okay, let's say I'm a citizen of uh, Sweden, or I'm a citizen of uh, Peru, I'm a citizen of Japan, or it can be also that, you know, I'm a citizen of Kaunas, so as well, or you know, so it's on a personal level. So these are the three, how to say, the three dimensions that are usually like mentioned in the in the in the research. And um, 
So now when we speak about de decentralized citizenships, so idea is basically that you have these dimensions, or at least some of them, but without the government, without some you know, public institution, that people can create their own systems, own systems for community belonging, for activism, for cooperation, for economic uh, interactions, for, uh, let's say, exchange. It can be both at the global level, it can be at the local level. That you also have your ID, like in a more digital sense. So instead of, let's say, having a piece of paper, like a passport, you maybe have your digital, sorry, decentralized citizenship on your smartphone or on some other device. So basically, that you, you can actually have some kind of citizenship, even if you, for some reason, don't have any support from any government. Maybe you're a stateless person or political refugee or, or similar, but still you can be active in a, certain, in a certain community, in a certain framework, so to say. And uh, one example I want to show you from my own personal uh, first experience is a community called Seeds. Now, you know, Seeds is about you know, the biological term and so on. But uh, it's also an abbreviation for like sowing um, uh, equitable and ecological decentralized societies. And in the SEEDS community, the idea is that the citizenship is about ecology and climate and environment and sustainability. So the idea is basically that um, people around the world, if they are members of the SEEDS community, they can <coughs> practice things that are considered to be good for, let's say, agriculture, for food security, for uh, interhuman cooperation, for, for, let's say, planetary well-being, for climate transformation, sustainability, and so on. And the interesting thing here, from uh, based on the seeds experience, is that uh, the system is the following, that when you join the seeds community, you start your journey as a visitor, Okay, so you are not comp not a citizen directly. You, have, you start as a visitor. You have certain rights as a visitor, but you don't have the full rights as a citizen. So in order to become a citizen, you need to show more engagement. You need to show more commitment to the community. You need to cooperate with more people. You need to start projects. You need to um, uh, maybe write some articles. Maybe you need to grow some vegetables in your yard or something like that. And after, after some time, you can become a resident. Then you have some more rights. Uh, more, how to say, access to the community. And then the final stage is that, is that you become a citizen. And when you become a citizen, then you also have more, let's say, rise, rights and possibility to contribute to the overall development of the community, like regarding how much uh, of our money we should spend on certain projects, uh, which kind of, let's say, programs, which kind of tools should be used for the, the network operations. So that's, that's just one example how things can can work in practice. So what's now happening uh, around the world at the moment is that um, there is a new concept that is now being uh, emerging from very theoretical ideas to a more practical level of uh, engagement. And this is called the network state. And these are some of the uh, examples. Now, in order for you to explain, sorry, no, sorry, in order for me to explain to you what the network state is, I can start by explaining some of the basic um, historical ideas and concepts when it comes to the nation state. So, the idea of the nation state, like in the, let's say, late 18th century, century during the 19th century, you know, American Revolution, uh, French Revolution. Uh, revolutions in Europe like during the 19th century. So the idea was, okay, that if a group of people, they want to create a nation, then they should have a state that works for them. So the state exists for the nation, the nation exists for the state, so like, like vice versa, okay? Now, the idea with the network state is that a state exists for the network, and a network, as a decentralized community, um, is having a state. Its own, its own system, but without the government, you know, without actually involving government institutions or public institutions. And uh, one of the, basically one of the creators of this idea of the network state, uh, his name is uh, Balaji Srinivasan, he is a 
Karen as well is a tech entrepreneur. He's been work, working with cryptocurrencies. He's also presenting himself as a philosopher. To be honest, I, I, I read his book. It's called The Network State. I, okay, I don't agree in, like, in every point, but I think in general it's a very insightful book to read. I can show you more information later. So together with some other people that are now popular in this world of Web3 and decentralization and Game B and how to improve our world by using decentralized technology like blockchain and cryptocurrencies, so now this idea of network states is emerging. And the interesting thing here is that it reflects the fact that decentralization is also about pluralism. Because, for example, a network state doesn't have to be geographically limited, limited as a, let's say, nation state. Because um, uh, a network state can have members in many parts of the world at the same time. Uh, so, and also another thing is that uh, network states and communities can develop by uh, through ideas that they want to specialize on a certain development, on certain factors. For, let's say, for example, that you are a very ecologically minded person and you want to create a network state regarding climate and environment. Or maybe you're a very cultural person, you want to create a cultural, uh, sorry, network state for cultural creative work. Or maybe you're a person who, uh, let's say, uh, you're committed to a certain local area and you want to create a private, more like a private city or a decentralized community city. So it's, it, it all depends on your uh, you know, personal interests and beliefs and ambitions. Like for example, the cabin here, they are creating a network state uh, where people are living in this kind of older cabins, like in you know, a wooden cabins in the forest, and there, there they can be very high-tech entrepreneurs, work with crypto, but then they can also spend time in nature, meditate, and do Zen and yoga and that kind of stuff. So, so. And there, for example, there's a, the case of Afropolitan uh, network state. So the guy, the guy I know who is behind that, he wants to basically unite uh, more people from Africa that are more, let's say, cosmopolitan in their mindset, who have experience of living around the world, so that they can have uh, some kind of a community uh, ba based, based on, on such experiences. You know? So that, for example, people from Africa can help each other when they are in America or in Europe, uh, so that nobody feels alone and excluded. So to say. And um, from this talk about decentralized citizenships and uh, network states, I also want to briefly introduce you the concept of bioregions. And here we have to understand that um, bioregion can be also public, and it can be also decentralized. It can be, let's say, more independently created. But the core idea is here that, um, that mm, let's say, modern nations, but also states in general, are sometimes simply too big for certain things too small for other things. We speak about global problems, risks, and challenges. So the idea of bioregion is that imagine if people could organize themselves when it comes to environment and climate and sus sustainability. So meaning, for example, that I who live in Stockholm, I should now be in the same bioregion as you here in Kaunas. And when it comes to things like um, you know, shared environment, like the Baltic Sea region, we should be able, as citizens of the bioregion, to take decisions instead of, let's say, Swedish and Lithuanian governments doing that for us. Kind of that's the point that if, if governments uh, simply are not efficient enough to deal with climate change and environmental problems, then there are some other ideas, some other solutions how to, how to solve that. When I speak about sovereignty, action, and resources. And I also just want to show you one of my own ideas. So this is Norland, northern Sweden. So it's a, it's a, it's a region, uh, official, you know, public region. Now, Norland is around 60% of the territory of Sweden, but only 10% of the population is living there. Now there is a trend that uh, the region is trying to attract more people to come up to northern Sweden to live there, uh, partly because there is, you know, there are these um, mines with like rare earth minerals, for example, and, and, and similar. So one of my proposals is like imagine attracting people from different decentralized communities that have their own decentralized citizenships and systems of governance 
like decentralized democracy and similar, if they could move up to northern Sweden and start organizing their systems there, start with innovation, entrepreneurship, agriculture, and they can cooperate with municipalities at the local levels, uh, Norland uh, region, the Swedish government, and partly even the European Union at the same time. And they can cooperate with, with each other. So it becomes a very kind of cooperative, integrated um, uh, framework depending on what has to be solved, what's the problem, so to say. Now, here's a tricky thing. Now, everything what I've told you now about these decentralized citizenships and communities and the network states and bioregions, the thing is that um, I usually say like this, that technologically speaking, all of us on, on the planet, we could already today live in some kind of a you know, united world planet, world federation kind of a Star Trek society where you know, we are all connected and we are simply just solving problems and you know, creating, doing things peacefully through conversations and meaningfulness. But socially, you know, the world, our humanity is simply not there for many different reasons. Like, uh, the fact is today, let's say if you are born in Yemen, unfortunately you are going to grow up with ideas that your clan or tribe is the most important thing in your life. And let's say if you grew up, let's say, I don't know, sadly in, in, in Belarus you have a dictatorship and you know, authoritarianism and so on. And there are of course even problems in, in modern democracies, uh, even in Sweden where I'm from, like, that many people feel dissatisfied with how things are working today, they would like voting every four years on elections. Now, the thing is like this, that uh, since we, we are still living in a world where the word sovereignty, sovereignty is associated with the nations, and decisions of all the nations, beside, for example, the European Union, which is like a historical uniqueness for many reasons. So the United Nations is based on you know, intergovernmental, interstate, governance, you know, decisions. And they, they are the only ones, so only the UN member states can decide who can be recognized as a sovereign nation. Because the number of the uh, UN member states at the moment is 193, but there are more movements and proposals around the world to create some kind of a new, let's say, political nations or similar. Um, and this means that um, it's going to be very hard, I would say more or less impossible, at, the, at least at the current moment, for these decentralized citizenship communities to really try to achieve some kind of a sovereignty and recognition from modern existing states. But at the same, at the same time, decentralized citizenships and communities, uh, even if they, for different reasons, cannot replace modern citizenships, like you know, being a citizen of, let's say, Japan, or um, I don't know, Sweden or um, Mauritania, they can at least offer us some alternatives that are complementary, that enable cooperation between uh, humans and initiatives and organizations where modern public institu institutions, modern, let's say, political nations, uh, unions and similar are simply not enough or simply not interested for different reasons in solving different problems and challenges. So I think this is the, that decentralization in this sense is really one of the possibilities, one of the solutions for a near future, we're speaking now about, you know, towards 2030s, to really establish uh, decentralized, you know, communities that can be <coughs> very local and very global at the same time in order to deal with everyday problems uh, everyday human needs, but also that two more complex and meaningful ways can can contribute to solving, let's say, global problems and challenges. All right. Thank you very much for, for listening. I have a question that uh, you showed that the uh, sovereignty description here. You don't need to do that because the one of uh, the main points uh, why uh, these uh, decentralized organizations can't uh, change the state at this um, stage uh, it's uh, the uh, sovereignty itself because uh, uh, to be sovereign for the state you need earth you need a piece of land 
Yes, yeah. and so the, uh, of course we know communities that solve this problem, they just uh, uh, squatted uh, this of land and uh, claimed it's a sovereign state. But um, what solution do you think is the best? This is a very good point because I met people in this world of cryptocurrencies, decentralization, blockchain, web3, and some game B, who really have these ideas. They really believe in this. They want to create something new. But then you have this topic of land, of you know, where do you, where do you actually have a territory? And why, you know, and why should the government, like, I don't know, government of Lithuania, now imagine that all of us now go to government of Lithuania and we say, we want to create a network state here in Garars, can you please give us the right to do that? You know, can, you, can you give us this part of territory? So this, this place is not going to be anymore under, under control of government of Lithuania or even of the city council of Kaunas, but this is now completely like a more a territory belongs to Garaj uh, network state. Now this is, this is a really tricky thing, but what I know is that several of these initiatives, like in the case of let's say of Cabin, they are really trying to find land where they can exercise their citizenship, where they can really practice the ideas they believe in. My, my personal problem, I used to be before in party politics, and I met so many people who say that I'm an anarcho-capitalist, I'm an anarcho-communist, I'm a, I don't know, anarcho-socialist, um, I'm a libertarian, I'm this and that. Mm -hmm. But okay, but, but what do you do in practice? Okay, you, you say you're a libertarian, so why don't you... Um, um, you know, why don't you use crypto, or if you're, I don't know, anarcho-communist, why don't you start some cooperative there? You have a lot of land in Northern Sweden. Well, I mean, I, I believe in that, but I don't, you know, really do that in Bexley. And I decided that that's not the solution. The solution is really to try to practice what you believe in. You know, be the change, I think Gandhi said it, be the change you want to see in the world. Otherwise, other people will change you in a, you know, from above, from the top down in a nasty way. Actually, I was thinking that political authorities, uh, which is uh, conservative, uh, will not let anything happen like no. this in the in the national level. Yeah, so of course. It, <laughs> so to to do it, it should be massive uh, involved uh, people, uh, which is like also correlate with uh, education. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think that majority in any country in the world even close to the de decentralized ideas. Or like freedom of movement, it, it was a project World Passport. Uh, I was uh, mm. like paying attention on it because like it was you can buy it for one hundred, and it was a cases that people from Canada moved with that passport to United States with a fight at the border, like consider international human rights bills and stuff. And sometimes it's worked, but only because you have Canadian passport and they know it, yeah. It will not work if you're coming from no. Mexico to the United States with that password. No, this, this is another thing that you're touching about. So basically, um, yes, uh, the, the, like for example, you have the Ujupis uh, Republic, like, yeah. like it, but it's a cultural kind of cultural project. It would be very hard for Ujupis now to go to the Lithuanian government and say, like, give, give us this land. There is also a Jemoitian yeah. passport, sorry, in Lithuania, I figured out just recently, and it's very interesting cultural, yeah. something like that. I can also show you one. <laughs> One nasty experience. So I, when I was in politics, I told to my colleagues that, look, there is technology today that nobody has to be stateless. No, no, no refugee has to be, you know, without papers. Why not, you know, just simply use that as a technological solution? And I was told that, but do you really want every refugee, um, every person that is um, moving from a certain danger or something? Do you really want them to, you know, have uh, documents? Because then you know, all of them will be able to come to us, you know. And this is, this is a tricky thing because it's, it is also about identification. Uh, research says that um, most of us, well, let's say like 10, 15% of humans at the moment, they would say that like they are world citizens in a very strong way, you know, that they are like global citizens, cosmopolitans. Around, I would say, 50, 60 percent would say that they are mainly national citizens. Like, yeah, I'm a citizen of the United Kingdom or Canada, and then you have like maybe something like 40 percent who say that they are more subnational. Now, this subnational can be everything from I'm more Catalan than Spanish, and it can be that I'm a member of my tribe in in, in Yemen, and even, for example, even in Europe, 
we still haven't solved this problem of when we speak about federalism, that it's hard to create a new member state in the European Union because the nat our national governments are deciding who's going to become a new member state. So even if majority in, let's say, Catalonia would like to separate from Spain but still be part of the Union, uh, I don't know, uh, Belgium will block Catalonia and then Spain says, okay, we will block Flanders. So that's how it is. Okay, any, any more? I can also tell a story like one time ago, like when I encountered the police, I said I'm not, uh, I don't have a nationality, I'm just an animal and I can <laughs> walk freely, you know? And they like, <clears throat> they just, uh, st still they, they were very uh, confused, like what I'm telling them. So they uh, just uh, forced me with handcuffs and took out my all my stuff from uh, the wallet and then checked it that I actually had uh, like an ID. I have, uh, I have hero. I have uh, an example. I don't know, know the name. Uh, two the men who um, uh, actually uh, decided he doesn't want any numbers in his passport. He is against because and uh, he uh, is a Dutch citizen and uh, in the Dutch. Uh, uh, the kings uh, don't have numbers in pa passport, so he applied to the uh, court and he got a passport without numbers and every time police talk, he, it doesn't care. <laughs> 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 Headache for them. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's how the uh, people practice it. Uh, so I wanted to mention there is lots of people who for some reason uh, cannot use, uh, like, exchange their passport and they're not at home. For example, people from Belarus who run from dictatorship, yeah, uh, and their passport expiring and uh, they organize that if you want to get new passport, you have to go back. So people very limited, they couldn't move, they couldn't extend documents. And uh, this kind of, some kind of international agreement of for these people to have some kind of passport which is not belong to country, to citizenship, but could be belong to country, like non-citizenship passport or something like this, based on these ideas, could be al already a solution for people who, yeah. who just can't already, realize their we rights. We have already to made this solution, even technically, we have a product that's called the Meta ID and uh, it's yeah. uh, self-sovereign identity, then you can have uh, oh. on your phone and uh, uh, by demand you can share your data. Uh, but uh, the, uh, actually, as you say, it's, um, uh, it, it has a great resistance for, from those uh, who pretend uh, to be authority or, or uh, democratic authority or um, non-democratic authority, never mind, because uh, it means this, uh, uh, involving this, uh, the, the integrating this sovereign identity into the uh, um, like building a new uh, state without a state here mm -hmm. so it uh, means uh, we resign all the politics finally so the political branch uh, as it is should uh, sh w won't be exist like it is here with the absolutely and i think the diff to understand this the uh, importance uh, sorry, the important thing here is that uh, even in a decentralized community, you can have politics, negotiations, disagreements, agreements, debates. What you don't need is political party politics. Th that's kind of the point, that you can have politics without political parties, you can have democracy without representative parliaments and so on. I think that's such an important point because all of the rules we are following right now, they've been made why not question them constantly? Yeah. And why not? Why do we need actually land for for a state? As you said, they are not um, combining land and the state, but they are combining ideas or, or, or a construct with with the, with the state. So this is just, and I think it's it's gonna be very smart people who are just considering everything there is so far, and they need to find those niches where they can find a, a find a, a space for them or find a new. Yeah, like it's it's uh, basically nothing is. That's the that's the point. Like it's very strict. We have a lot of rules, but this is the chance for us to be even more creative and to find even more ways to go around or, or underneath or wherever we need to go to to 
get into this uh, direction or get to this direction? It's exactly. It's, it's the social world. It's the world we create. The question is how we create it. So I have just one idea. I was uh, just uh, thinking about it. Was like uh, there's this concept which called the the government's form. It's like technocracy. Mm -hmm. Like where the, the specialists uh, are in the decision, are making the decisions for like uh, very savvy in their uh, field uh, to uh, do some, uh, to create some, like to, to act uh, like as a politician. Uh, and uh, the idea is like that the artificial intelligence that's like coming up is like this uh, virtual, uh, it's uh, very uh, specialized, like it has the knowledge like as a, as a as a best uh, as a best like specialist like and it will improve like that yeah so how uh, uh, and think how it would be possible to create the, this uh, form of technocracy where we don't even have politicians but the AI is like this uh, thing that we manage uh, and use it as a tool to uh, structure our uh, decision making and use like uh, math and not just uh, this uh, spontaneous decision you know. Yeah, the thing is, I think that, for example, Plato would, would have been very happy for his ideas around the Republic if there would have been AI at that time. <laughs> so it would have, he would, would have been very happy today regarding AI. The thing is, I personally, I mean, I'm not like against using technology for democracy. On the, on the contrary, it's necessary to improve democracy. But I think that idea of technocracy in the sense that the AI is making all the decisions uh, is also kind of partly dangerous and partly it kind of would remove democracy because democracy still has to be done by us as humans where we make agreements you know we, we have debates and conversations then we have to make some decisions but also I want to leave the, the AI better the, the, the next presentation have decisions based on math not just uh, like uh, this uh, irrational you know uh, okay. human uh, thing, okay uh, all right <laughs> but I think okay would you like to answer that like uh, on your presentation yeah, I think this is the next yeah. Yeah. So okay. I have Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so, so just just more more answer to, to give. No, the situation is that, for example, like do you do you say that to take uh, like decisions based into mathematics, the, the problem is not the mathematics. Like all the mathematics and all the data that the people need to take, they are in there. The problem is the people at the top, uh huh? Because yeah. these people, they have the data, they know what is like happening. But they do not serve like the people that suppose that they serve. Uh -huh. You you can build like this layer where people interact with this uh, mm, like higher level uh, artificial intelligence system that would uh, shape uh, like how the person uh, makes its own decisions. You know, like uh, how to uh, uh, use, I, how to manage resources. Uh, yes, but the situation is that the people who, who is in the top they are not going to allow that. Because if you are in the top, what you want to what you want to do is to stay in the top, and you want your kids to be in the top. Yeah, but we can create it ourselves for ourselves, not the people. Like I will, will just give me a moment. Imagine I build uh, robots for myself that makes me food and like uh, takes care of, take care of me. I just like uh, I just need like uh, some resources, and I would build it for myself. You know, not to serve others, but just for personal use. You know. Yeah. Just okay. To, to cook, just uh, my, my is, 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 yeah. is okay. Like that's just perfect. Just skip, skip whatever that's is there on the top. I'll just leave it all mm -hmm. all the old system. I'll build a new one. You know. Yeah, but for that, yeah, but for that to work, like you will need that everybody, for example, in this room, like they have something similar. And what do you think that the government is going to do when they found out that we we do not need them? Because <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. Let's be honest. Yeah. Basically. Like if we were like able to do this, like we will not need uh, like like all that bureaucracy that we have like over there. Of course, that some part of the bureaucracy is like is like needed, you know, like to keep in control like uh, like the state and stuff. But let's be honest, like for the rest, like uh, these people, these just they are just leeches. That's that's the world. They are just living from public money. All right, guys, let's you know what? Let's take a break, maybe like ten minutes, and then we are back for the next. Presentation. We need okay. some. Let's we need some air. Some yeah. reflections. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Ten, 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 ten.